Good morning. All right. Oh. <laughs> well, we're taking a picture real fast. <laughs> So we are at <laughs> Tuzigut, Tuzigut National Monument. Yeah, National Monument. Another place again where we were able to use our parks pass. There for the beautiful. Yeah, not that we're sponsored. <laughs> we just use it a lot now yeah. that we have it. So this is a 110 room Pueblo that was discovered in 1933 um, and rebuilt. Um, and it's slope same location so we're going to just do a little walk around tour and see what it's all about maybe see if we can get a park ranger to talk a little bit about it with yeah. us building this around 10 50. okay and this is what you would have seen if you were here when they were building it let's even get these guys here yeah, no, you guys want to hear a story about tuzi goot yeah. <laughs> it was a cold winter night and all through the house all the people in tuzi goot <laughs> couldn't find a mouse <laughs> They started building this place around 1050. And do you know that is older? That's before your mom and dad were born. <laughs> before your grandma and grandpa were born. And before your great 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 grandma and grandma were born. Long time ago, huh? And this is what you would have seen. To get to your now, when you go to your house, you you walk to the door and you open the door and you walk in, right? Well, no, that didn't work here. You had to climb a ladder, get up on the roof, walk over to the hole on the roof that was your house, and you went down inside. And that worked really well for about 350 years, and they started to move on. Well, after they started moving on, something bad happened. Well, there's a re... Take a look at this. That's just a big pile of rocks, isn't it? And do you know why it be why the walls became a big pile of rocks? It was your fault, all four of you. <laughs> <laughs> because Tuzi Goot here, everyone had a job. Mom, dad, the big, strong teenage boys, and the kids your age, just kind of like on the farm. On the farm, if you grew on a farm, you might have to go out and collect the chicken's eggs. Well, just like these guys here, the kid's job was to re-mud the walls because, and, and now don't lie now, but the last time you came in the house with mud on your <laughs> shoes, did it stay on your shoes or did it fall on the floor that mom just cleaned? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happens too. The mud didn't stay where it was put. It fell out. And when the mud falls out, there's nothing holding these rocks in place now. And see? And then when everybody moved away, the kids weren't there to put the mud back in the walls. And it was your fault that it happened. <laughs> they had neighbors. If you look down there, you'll see that volcano shaped hill. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, if you just follow that dirt road mm -hmm. and where it goes down, you have E.T.'s bicycle and you can just keep going. Mm -hmm. you'd, you'd bump right into that volcano-shaped hill. That was a 300-room ruin. Huh. This was 110. That was even bigger. Yeah, uh, three times. And if you look over to the right, you'll see a dirt road. The dirt road that tees out into those two hills. There is a ruin on top of the bigger hill, the one to the right. And they they liked what they called line of sight. They wanted to be able to stand here and see their neighbors over there and over there. And so it worked out really well. They grew corn, beans, squash in the fields and cotton in the fields to the, to the right and left here. And um, there was about 200, maybe 250 people here at any given time. Would, do you know if they domesticated any animals? I have read that they kept turkeys. Um, 
As far as domestic animals, horses definitely not. Yeah, yeah. Horses didn't exist here. Yeah. Horses didn't exist. Hernan Cortez reintroduced horses to the Americas in 1519 when he invaded Mexico. Show you guys this. Oh, I, I, yeah. Parks. <laughs> I just got a cheap one off Amazon, <laughs> but you can get, you know, these ones. Let's see how much these are. Oh, they're ten dollars. So, yeah, they're probably thicker, and you know this, but um, so I don't know, similar price, I guess. Maybe I can't remember what I spent, but let's see which one I want. Well, there's these. I don't know which one I want. The Junior Ranger. Maybe this big one. Because, why not? So. Sweet. Two <laughs> Uh. Ran out, of, ran out of memory on the GoPro, which we usually kind of talk into as we're driving and showing clips. So, and I don't have another memory card, and we still have a few more days. Rookie mistake. Yes. So, we just wanted to do a quick little review of the, um, wherever we are. Tuzagut. Tuzagut, yeah. Um, Lisa. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd give Tizagoon a 10 out of 10. <laughs> like, okay, I know I sound lame, but I really think everything out there is cool and unique in its own way. Right. But some things, really, I would give less, but um, this was really cool. I don't know if it's worth $10 a person necessarily, so, but, you know, to each their own. Yeah. But I thought it was really cool. I It was interesting walking through, and I... Okay, so comprehension is definitely not a strong suit for me. So to read, like, a, you know, the information and then retain what it says yeah. and be able to repeat it back, I can't do. So it was really cool to have the ranger there explain everything yeah. and kind of talk about the storyline. You can tell he's really passionate about it, so that was really cool. Right, yeah. So, so hopefully you guys learned yeah. a little and gave you um, the desire maybe to come out here and check it out if you're in the area. Um, yeah, I... For me, I think that's more interesting than going on another hike and seeing the same thing. So I thought it was really cool to see something different and kind of associate yourself with the area and find out right. how um, some of the native people lived. And, yeah. You know, so I think that's really cool. Like I said, the ten dollars per it, it could add up if you have a big family, but if you have a pass, definitely come. Okay. If it's um, if you've got it five so, of you, another thirty dollars, you might as well buy a parks pass. You know. Yeah. We sound, we sound like we're. Uh, we're being sponsored by the National <laughs> we're Park, Park Rangers Service, ourselves. But I but just, I'm sold on it now. Yeah. Like I was like eighty dollars, you know. But oh my gosh, just this trip has paid for itself. We we double. bought so. um, a Utah State Parks Pass this year and have used it maybe. Three and that's times. also I think eighty dollars. Yeah, we've used it like three times, and we bought this one yeah. three days ago and have used it a ton. Yeah. So it's definitely worth it. I yeah. I really like being able to get out and see all those you know all the different things and yeah. It's really so, cool. I even bought myself a National Parks Geek pin because <laughs> I feel like I'm totally geeking out about it. It's just so cool. There's just so many cool things to go see. Yeah.